Thank you so much for tuning in to Teaching for the Culture. This is your host, Bianca Goolsby, and I'm so excited to be with you today. I have Dr. Miller, who is a phenomenal educator, leader in the community, and I am so excited for y'all to meet him. How are you doing, Dr. Miller? I am doing great. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here on the platform with you. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. And so we're here rocking out. And so talk about you for a minute. Well, um, I guess it, it has to start from the beginning, right? I grew up um, with my mom and my dad, but my grandma, of course, my mom and my dad, they work 24-7. So I was in the house with my grandmother and my grandma, my grandfather, who I saw invest in the community. Uh, my grandmother had a, a daycare center that was, you know, a daycare center, but not a center by the state. So people would trust her with their children. She, they would drop them off and she would keep them from six o'clock in the morning until, you know, parents got off and fixed them three meals a day. My grandma, my grandfather was a self-made plumber who, you know, would get up at two and three o'clock in the morning and go over somebody's house to fix their plumbing. So I saw that investment um, from my grandparents at an early age. And I, I just I was in love how how much the community and how the community uh, what the community meant for them. And so as I grew up, I grew up actually in the performance area. I, uh, I played football, I played basketball, I played sports. I played all these different um, athletics, but uh, I, I grew up in the church. Right. So, you know, being black, you know, that's what you do. You go to church, you sing. But in the Bible says that your your talent um, your your talent should make room for you, um, and it actually truly did. I was in co- uh, high school, and I'll never forget. I, John Ederson was my um, music teacher, and uh, he heard me singing uh, as I always do. I sing now in the hallways. The kids know I'm coming down the hall because I'm always singing something. So he heard me singing. He was like, "You should uh, act, definitely audition for um, Candlelight CD for Disney." And I was like, "What? You know, like, yeah, I'm a, I play football. Like, that's not what I'm doing." He was like, "You should definitely, definitely give it a shot." Got my first recording contract with Disney uh, when I was in 11th grade, and from there, I realized, like, hey, you know, my talent will make room for me. And so I, I started focusing on the vocal thing, and I traveled around the world performing, um, still investing in the community. My dad brought me back here. He died seven years ago. Um, I finished. I got my PhD in education. I had again been involved in youth since I was young because my grandmother had the daycare center, so I saw what was going on. So, I it was a, it was a niche that I was going to go into education, and I started a program called Filling the Lane, filling the gaps between education, sports, arts, and community. The art piece being because I was a performer, the sports piece because I I thought I was a good athlete, but I wasn't great enough to be that D1 player like my brother. But I think it's a it's a it's a niche for all of those things um, in the program because you know a lot of our kids they don't have the opportunity to see the arts, they don't have the opportunity to be diverse in culture. So it was very important for me to have something here in our county for those purposes. So. FTL came along and I, I got immersed in education um, from being a teacher um, and going up the, the chain for the Polk County Teacher Year, represented by the state of Florida and moving up and being the assistant head of school for Academy Prep. So, um, I mean, my life is my my old my first boss, uh, Miss Williams, would say um, you're a free spirit, Vincent. And she said, you know, you involved in so much and you love so much. She said, I, I wish I could have more people just as involved as you. And I think that's how my life has been for these 38 years. It's just that once I'm in it, I give 120 percent, whatever that is. And, and, and the case is I'm, I'm immersed in education. I believe in it. Um, I, I think that our youth and our kids and our, our black and brown children need to see black and brown brothers and sisters involved in their education. I think data shows that, you know, having a black and brown sister and brother inside of the classroom does does tremendous effects before our children inside the classroom and not just our black and brown students, our Caucasian brothers and sisters as well. Like uh, the power that we have inside of the classroom um, that we can we can almost force and engage learning is something that is just not seen. It's not taught. It's not something that you can go to school for. It's just that that dominancy that we bring into the classroom and that automatic respect when you saw, you step into the classroom. I think that's just so important. 
Like I, I truly love your story and seeing how you've had people in the home instill in you and people that were in the community instill in you and just try to cultivate that growth is, is amazing. So my next question to that is what does freedom and fulfillment look like for you? Oh, that's a, that's a loaded question, right? I think for me, freedom gives me the ability to do as I please and do what I want um, with with any perimeter and safety perimeter per, per, uh, surrounding it, right? Um, freedom as a brother, though, is a different conversation. Being able to walk in the same um, dynamics or sit at the same table as a Barney Barnett or uh, the owner or the CEO of Publix, uh, to me, is one of those opportunities that, you know, that we're given with this thing called education, um, but we're also given with the, the ability to know how to network too, because I don't think that education is the only way to be successful, but I do think that education teaches us how to relate and build those networks to be successful. So I do think that we need this piece so importantly in our life to grow and build those connections so we're able to do whatever that freedom looks like or build whatever that freedom looks like to your own individual self. So for me personally, you know, freedom is just having the will and power to do what I feel is right. And at the end the ability to install those rules and those regulations, and those procedures where I what I feel by via research that is going to move in advance, especially if we're talking about education in general, uh, our children. Absolutely. And. I have seen the amazing work that you've posted in the Teaching for the Culture group where students are doing step shows and presentations and just all the amazing things that you're cultivating there in, in Polk County. So how can the community support the amazing work that you're doing? Just come and visit, right? I, I, I think it's important to know that being a teacher in public sector for a long time, Sometimes, you know, you walk into teacher's room and it's a horse and pony show. You know that it's not what it is. You know, I mean, you know what I mean. It's, it's yeah. just not what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but I invite people out to my campus all the time because it. I want them to know that it's not that. Like our kids um, are definitely invested in the community. Our teachers, most of them, because I'm going to be 100% honest, you can't say 100% all of them, but most of our teachers are there for the mission. They are mission driven. And they understand that our kids need that type of love that they're not getting elsewhere, right? So we are a community. We go to school from our, our bell ring at seven, our bell rings at seven, and we're in school to about six o'clock. Right. So it's an all day affair. We have enrichment programs at the end of the day. So our day really ends typically at 315. But we bring in enrichment partners and I, I, I hire our enrichment partners. And I really I do. Uh, for me, it's important that our kids see our black and brown sisters at those enrichment partners. So I focus on that um, because our, our population is black and brown, you know. So I think that's important because, you know, here in Polk County, most of our, uh, it, I think it's a one to five, don't quote me on that, live in single family homes or without a father. Mm. So it's very important, you know, to have those individuals on campus to show our kids and, and, to, and, to, and to inspire those kids to be something that they otherwise may have not thought of because of those relationships they're building in those enrichment programs. Um, chess is a foundation. Um, so one of our core curriculum is chess. Which is, you know, it was surprised to me when I got there. Like, I was like, chess? But I get it, right? It, critical thinking. It teaches you to think. So when you walk on our campus, our, our, our students, our fifth and our sixth graders are speaking with you with vernacular. And you look, you're looking at them like, you're in fifth and sixth grade? And, you know, I visited the school about four or five months before I actually took the job. And... I thought it was 100% I'm like, oh, this is a this is a horse and pony show, right? They get up, they greet you, they look at you in their eyes, they're having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And as I continued to go to the school and have conversations, I realized like this is the, the norm here at the school. And it just it, it excited me that, you know, we can reach our kids and we can put them in a situation for greatness only if we have people surrounding them for them to be and reach their fullest potential. That is amazing. And I just really, really, truly, again, appreciate you and the work. I love seeing your posts and your quotes. And I just want to say just thank you for being a change agent. Your voice is very powerful. And I just thank you for sharing just the amazing things that you are doing and also 
for people to visit the school. So um, tell people how they can support, visit, tell us what we need to hear. Perfect. Well, um, of course, uh, Academy Prep uh, of Lakeland Centers is located in Lakeland, Florida. Florida. Uh, you can go to our website um, at any point in time. You can support through our website as well. But bigger than that, um, you asked, you, you said, what can we do? It's the effort. I, I, I tell my students all the time, it's not the skill of the man or, or the woman or the individual that makes them great. It's the effort. Um, so whatever you're doing, wherever you are, just go in with 100 percent. You know, we know that teaching is hard. We know that, you know, teaching um, is for for uh, the individual who really care and really have a heart for giving. But when you if you decide to do it, just give 100 percent because you just never know what life you would change, right? Mm -hmm. I was, unfortunately, or I was at a funeral and I was burying a student, a former student, um, he's 23, uh, died. And you know, the hardest thing I realized is that I I wonder how, how big of an impact that his teachers had on his life before yesterday, right? Who did he think about before yesterday? Um, and I always, every time I walk into my classroom, I always think about like, I don't know who I'm going to reach, but I hope I reach somebody with my thoughts, my kindness, my character, and my words. Um, so I just, you know, as we do this thing called education, um, as we do it, we have to be united as a front. Um, I, I love social media because it gives you outlets like yourself so we can reach out to one another. Please don't hesitate to ask. I don't know all the answers, but I guarantee you there's somebody on this on this platform that can help you get through when when that day, you know, you feel like this is not it. Because our our kids, especially if you're a black brother and a black student, a black brother and a black sister, they need us inside of the classroom. They need us to see administrators. I I, I remember growing up. And I didn't see a black, edu edu well, I didn't see a black administrator, right? From elementary to middle school, I didn't see a black person that looked like he was in charge or she was in charge of nothing. And blessedly, I had a mom and my dad that was here that I saw leadership in them. But for 15, from grade K through 12, right, our kids, what they get and what they realize, what is true in their reality is what they get and what they see every day they walk into the school. And we have a big part to do with that. And if they if they don't see greatness, if they don't hear greatness, we can expect them to be great. And so to me, it's very important for us as brothers and sisters to continue to move up that education chain and become the, the, the administrators of the school and just not stop inside the classroom and become the leaders of the county and not just stop at, at the school because our kids, the biggest platform that we have to, to really to be thick in a thick situation is that education platform from K to 12. So whatever we're doing, brothers and sisters out there, if you if you if you're thinking about not just because it's hard, the road does get easier. Um, but the most important is the investment in the village that for our for our for our youth, for our individual students who need to see us inside of the classroom every single day for for the betterment of them and their future. 